Hello everybody, this is Boaz Fala and I'm here with the weekly astrological message for the week of from February 25th until uh, March 4th, 2017. We have so much to speak about this week, I don't know where to start from. But let's start from the fact that Mercury is moving into Pisces today on the 25th. Mercury, the planet of navigation, communication and logic is moving into dreamy Pisces. So we could all be a little, we could be more like astronauts, we could be out of space and time, we could feel disconnected, we can feel discombobulated, we could feel a little more confused, we could do many more mistakes. So regarding schedules or regarding things that need attention to small details, whatever they are, we really need to pay attention and we really need to make sure that we're not too spacey and out there. What is this time good for this time is great for conversation with the muses it's a great time for anything that is artistic everything that is creative and everything that is spiritual so any kind of project like that could be highlighted during the next few weeks tomorrow we have a solar eclipse a major solar eclipse on eight degrees of pisces at exactly 10 a.m eastern standard time that's around 1600 hours, 4 p.m. Central European time. The eclipse is happening on Formulat, the brightest star of the Piscean constellation and one of the brightest in the sky. It's a major eclipse and as I always say, eclipses are times of change. Two weeks before, two weeks ahead, this is a time of major change in your life. And if you want to know where the eclipse touches you, then check what is around those degrees in your natal chart. Around zero, uh, zero 08 degrees Pisces, zero 08 degrees uh, Virgo, zero 08 degrees uh, um, uh, Sagittarius, so zero 08 degrees uh, Gemini. All these angles can play a part, and the, the effect on you could be much more major. See if you have any major stars there, Natal. But really, if we want to allow this time to prove miraculous for us to prove very positive for us because when the gates of heaven open we really have no control we don't know what's coming through and if we want that's that's as my teacher Maurice Fernandez always says and if we want that change to become a positive change for us take all the things you've neglected take all the things that you've turned your face from and then want to worry about and address them address them beforehand and uh, the Pisces influence can talk a lot about surrendering, about surrendering to the fact that we're not in control here, that it's not our own, uh, uh, to, it's not our, our, ours to choose how things develop in this world. There's things that are bigger than us, there's things that are greater than us, things that we don't understand and we can't anticipate. It's about confirming and it's about really joining this oceanic current that we're all swimming in. Not only joining it, but becoming part of it. Becoming part of it with everything I have to give. Not being passive, not being a dead fish in the current, but giving it my spirituality and giving it my creativity and giving it my artistic achievement as well. And becoming much more spiritually inclined and in touch with the whole as a result. Now on the 27th, 28th, we have a conjunction between Aries, Mars and Uranus, opposing Jupiter, squaring Pluto, combustion. Very explosive time. It's a time that we have a very short fuse. It's a reactionary time. It's a time of protest. It's a time of rebellion. It's a time that we cannot put the lid on our volcanic eruptions. And we really need to hope that all the kind of protests that we're going to see both individually in our own lives, privately, from within ourselves or from people around us, or collectively, are going to be positive ones. Because if the person is not balanced, we could see people doing outrageous things in the name of an ideal, in the name of an idea. And we really have to be careful, careful on the roads, careful at home, 
Again, all the small details. Not only that, you know, that cycle of Uranus and, and, and Jupiter, they were conjunct back in the end of 2010, the beginning of 2011. That was the time that all the civil disobedience and the rebellion and Occupy Wall Street, Arab Spring, all the social revolutions around the world started. And now it's, it's, it's an important time. It's the middle time. It's the time that people, you know, understand things, that all these understandings fall into place and people understand what is the next step and what it is they need to do it's what I need to do Uranus in Aries in the group Uranus okay Uranus in the group what I need to do according to what I believe in Jupiter about justice in in Libra so all these ideas about fairness and justice come up and our philosophy regarding how we need to live and what is our role within the group and we understand better what it is we need to do and we need to be courageous enough to do it and not stupid or rebellious without any cause to really throw away the baby with the bathwater and not have it to uh, 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 and not build a, a change that is feasible that is can be consistent that would not prove that it would not withstand the tests of time and that kind of effect volatile effect grows from the 26 27 28 up to the 3rd 4th of March and then on the 4th of March we have Venus the planet of love relationships satisfaction and income go into retrograde in Aries so everything regarding what I, Aries, believe in, what I feel is my way, Aries, my need to rebel, my need to go out on my own road, to disattach from the rest, regarding issues of love, relationship, satisfaction, or income, are up for change. Because when a planet goes into retrograde movement, we change the way we think about these options these these subjects so all of these places and and how we make our relationships more satisfactory how we make our income more satisfactory how we gain more satisfaction in our life in general how does our love life become better what it is that we need to do all of these rise up to the surface and they're gonna stay that way until April 15th when Venus is going to conjunct Chiron again, squaring Saturn in the sky, like it was in Pisces, like it was about a month ago. So things that started then could come up again. And what we need to do during that retrograde cycle is really make sure that our love, our relationship, our satisfaction, and our monetary uh, subjects are up to par, are, are, that we know what we're doing that we have our intention on those subjects because if we don't we can find ourselves in situations by the end of the retrograde when that square to Saturn occurs conjunct Chiron that we get disappointed from our relationships disappointed from our love disappointed from income related issues and our satisfaction in our life lessens and as of that as, as, and because of that we learn our lesson and we change because what is that move between going back through Aries back into Pisces? Again, confirming. Confirming and, and, and adjusting to something that is bigger than us, that is stronger than us, that is not always, that doesn't run always according to our plan. And still honoring it. So that's about everything I had to tell you this time around. Two more dates I want you to pay attention for. It's the 27th. Moon conjunct Chiron could be some hard feelings and then the 1st of March, volatile as it is, the Moon is also squaring, squaring Pluto. So really watch those eruptions and those in that drama. Don't get caught up in the drama. I want to thank you for listening and of course if you want private consultations or uh, lessons or lectures, 
feel free to contact me or just any question. This is Boaz Fader. I'm an evolutionary astrologer from Israel signing off. Have a beautiful, positive week. May the eclipse treat us all well. Goodbye.